Fantasy Ed with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Yeah, it is the Fantasy Edge on uh, Monday Night Football Recap. What a wild Monday night game we had uh, to uh, start, you know, the first Monday night cast. Now, there is another game that is going on as we are taping, and that is uh, Denver at Oakland, so we won't be able to get to that. I'm Richard Seville, FantasySixPack.net, and joining me shortly is Jonathan Chan and Kevin Ho. Jono, did you watch this game? Did you get to see any of it? I know that you uh, have things to do in the evening, but uh, did you catch any? I saw Hopkins touchdown the first, and then I couldn't watch any of the rest of it. I saw the highlights of the kicks, though. That was cool. The highlights of the kicks? Yeah, lots of game-winning field goal. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's I guess that's the most important part. It's where the Saints won the game. Kind of uh, historic, a real heartbreaker for Deshaun Watson after taking them down the field with less than a minute to go <laughs> where you think they almost won and it almost went to overtime i bet you now the uh, texans wish it went to overtime because they probably would have had an extra chance but with breeze using that you know the slimmest what did he have like 34 seconds to to do it what about you kev uh thoughts on this game and uh did you see it yeah i mean it was an exciting game i thought it was it was a little sloppy in the first half with the saints not really uh, having it all together, but they got it going in the second, and they made it an interesting game. I, I don't know. It seems, um, I don't know. It was a good game. It was a little. It, was, it didn't go how I expected, but I thought it was a good game. Well, I'm just hunting around for some statistics for the, for the for the game, but I do know this that uh, DeAndre Hopkins, uh, because of his performance, he made the uh, top five wide receivers. We'll get to that in a little bit later, and also Alvin Kamara squeaked into the top ten just ahead of Le'Veon Bell. Deshaun Watson came in third. So we'll uh, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, we'll try to get you some statistics. Um, like we're doing this show just on the heels of the Monday night game. So we want to bring you up to date. So in this show, we'll uh, talk about those performers uh, here and there, the ones that uh, stand out for us. And, oh, I see you've got some stats here, Kev. Ah. Watson, 268, three touchdowns and one interception. And 40 yards on the ground. That's pretty good. Jono, uh, any thoughts on these uh, statistics? Uh, Breeze, not too bad either. Breeze did pretty well. It's good he shook off uh, whatever he was feeling at the end of last season when he struggled. Big one for me is Hopkins. He has, what, eight catches, 111 yards, two touchdowns. But he had a few, like, drops. I think he had four drops, three or four drops in the, in the game. It was, yeah. Uh, not like him, but could have been a way, way, way bigger night. And he got an unnecessary roughness penalty. Do you believe oh, it? Oh, that was a beautiful <laughs> suplex. Beautiful I suplex. I loved it. I loved it when it happened. It was great. Uh, Kev, um, thoughts on Carlos Hyde in this game? 10 carries for 83 yards. Didn't score, but uh, he's definitely a part of this. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, I thought we were going to see more of Duke as like uh, every down back. But Hyde actually looked pretty good. I can't really hate too much. 10 carries for 83 yards, like you said. He looked. Uh, he was running pretty decisively, pretty powerfully. I think he's a good complement to Duke. I think you're going to see kind of a 50-50 split depending on how the game goes um, in that backfield. So uh, not too happy about that. But anyone who believed in Hyde probably has, I don't know, maybe a flex RB. John O seven targets for Ginn. What do we make of him in fantasy now? I mean, Ginn's always been the same player, uh, especially with New Orleans. He can have you know seven this week, but next week he could have three. Still ninety yards with a with a seventy yard bomb thrown in there. But you know he's he's still good. He has good rapport with Breeze. He's been there for a while now, and he is and probably well, probably one of the best um, best ball players if you play in a league like that. But he's always been consistent with Breeze and. Excellent big pay, big play threat on every down. Uh, Kev, the second wide receiver on the Texans, uh, Will Fuller. I only recall him making one big catch. Of course, Stills went in for the touchdown. Um, after Nuke, uh, what do we what have we got? Um, I think you almost have kind of like a committee of receivers. I don't think that's a term, but um, it's something that kind of does exist with this Houston receiving score. I don't think anyone really stands out. Will Fuller had two targets, had caught them both for 69 yards, including that long one. Stills had three targets, caught them all, including that touchdown. Um, but nothing really too usable. DeAndre Hopkins just dominated the target share with 13 targets. Duke Johnson had five targets, so that's nice in a half one PBR leagues. But um, in that Houston, it's, it's going to be week to week. It's going to be better for best ball than 
weekly, some weeks you're not going to know who exactly to start. And it's going to be pretty frustrating, especially for Fuller. Let's get into some fantasy headlines, some injuries that happened. Most notably, Nick Foles, uh, broken clavicle. Uh, it looks like he's going to be out. He's on uh, IR, eligible to return. Garden Minchu, John O. Uh, he played all right, actually. I mean, he played better than all right. He set the record for completion percentage for any player with at least 15 pass attempts in their debut. And it was a franchise single game record for players with twenty five, at least 25 pass attempts. He is already the best quarterback in Jaguars history. Um, not really, <laughs> but still. Uh, yeah. He played great. He completed 22 of 25 passes. Granted, it was against the Chiefs garbage time defense. But still, he, he didn't look out of place. Um, DJ Chark and Chris Connolly looked useful, which was crazy to me. And yeah. Good game all around for the Jags offense. Just the defense was sh- understandably shredded. Yes, uh, but the Chiefs' defense is not one of the better ones. Uh, Kev, uh, value, uh, value. Like uh, I think I talked up DJ Chark a little bit. That uh, a lot of people are saying that he's uh, he's a guy to be to keep your eye on. Um, D.D. Westbrook did score a touchdown, but uh, it was actually Chark who looked more effective. What do you what do you make of this? Beyond uh, Leonard Fournette, what uh, what do you think it's going to be going forward without Foles? Um, I don't know. It looks like Minshew is kind of the guy who who kind of throws it all around. He didn't really focus on someone anyone too much. Um, I think they all might have value, but um, I think the one thing that we can come out of here for certain is that Dee Westbrook isn't the clear number one that we might have thought he was. Um, he's a little bit closer to guys like Chark and Conley than thought. So, um, I mean, it'll be interesting. I, I tend to believe that. Minshew is not going to be that good. I mean, he showed a little bit, but um, the Chiefs' defense really stinks. Uh, I mean, we'll see next week. I think they have the Texans, who uh, aren't a fantastic defense either. So, I don't know. Maybe he'll keep it going, but it's hard for me to believe in a guy named Gardner Minshew. Right. Um, and I'll continue with you on uh, Tyree Kill. He's out a few weeks. We don't know exactly. I mean, um, whenever, whenever I hear a story like, he won't need surgery, I mean, I don't know, it's still pretty bad. Uh Tyree Kill, Kev. Uh, I guess. I guess. Obviously, uh, Sammy Watkins is. I guess a WR one. Um, I don't know how a WR one, but high end WR two probably is where I'd put him. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to argue if you want to put him a WR one. Uh, I'd have to take a look at it, but yeah, I mean, if if this is what he looks like now that he's supposedly healthy and has a full year in an offense, and Tyree Kill's target share is going to go to him. Um, well, if you drafted Sammy Watkins late, you're looking good. It's actually what it is. Is is that Watkins was actually two of his touchdowns came, I do believe, before um, Hill went out. So I don't know what's going on there. But anyways, Watkins, uh, I, I I actually think it probably helps uh, Watkins if Hill's out there. Uh, Darius Geis, John O, out for a few weeks with a knee. Um, I guess they bring back AP. Yeah, they do. I mean, he's undisputed the early down and goal line back now. Chris Thompson's always going to have his role as the passing down guy. He got 10 targets on Sunday, so that's... I don't think he can go too much higher than that without hurting himself. So Thompson stays put as a solid passing down PPR back. But yeah, AP's back. Rushed for over 1,000 yards last year, and players in Washington seem to be upset that he wasn't active. So maybe he's the same guy that can do pretty well for you. Yeah, I think so. And uh, I mean, he's just... uh, He's probably just as good. I think... This is kind of the year of the old guys getting in there. Like, look at McCoy, he's doing it, and Gore doing it. You know, this is, it's turned into a, the season of the vets, I guess. Um, speaking of vets, we almost lost uh, Joe Mixon. Apparently, the uh, low level sprain is only day to day. He may play on Sunday, but uh, Gio Bernard, not exactly an old vet like the other guys, but, you know, he's been around the league a long time. And, so, Kev, uh, any worries about Joe Mixon? Um, I'm not talking about the injuries, but uh, his performance in um, in against Seattle. Um, not worries per se. I mean, it's it's kind of just at least we see that you know uh, Cincinnati is going to move the ball, so that's a good thing. Um, if, if there's any worries, it's the same things as before. Like Geo is going to take a lot of work, and um, you know he's injury kind of injury prone guy, so. Uh, not too worried. I wouldn't like move on from him or anything like that, but I was never really a mixing a high on mixing to begin with. And uh, we're kind of seeing a couple of the reasons why. 
Right. Uh, that pretty much wraps it up for our uh, headlines. Uh, but before we leave the headlines, I think what we should talk about is uh, <laughs> we got to talk about Antonio Brown. Uh, I've never seen such a wild weekend of ups and downs. And first he was going to be playing on Monday. And that, that, that was on, actually, that was on uh, late Friday. Antonio Brown is back. He's going to play Monday night, like right now in this game that we're that we're having our podcast uh, up against. But that wasn't to be. He was cut by the team, which seems I don't know about you guys, but it seemed a little fishy to me, uh, Kev. This whole this whole affair that he suddenly ends up on the Patriots. Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> very Belichickian, I guess. That uh, he signed with the Patriots like three minutes after he cleared waivers. Like, I don't. Can you even? Can you even? hash out the details of a contract in three minutes like have you guys ever tried to like hire someone you can't hire someone in three minutes how you how do you negotiate terms in three minutes um it seemed like a big setup it did it really seems like a big setup like boom he's already with the patriots but i mean i'll tell you one thing uh belichick doesn't put up with crap like john i don't think really this affects uh edelman's value really um no it edelman's always good I guess he'll have a few, uh, fewer targets with with Brown there. Adam is still gonna be the main slot guy, like the move the chains guy. But I think this affects mostly is James White. Now we have you know another receiver out there, and White's role in the passing game it'll still be there, but the volume won't be as won't be as big. I think White's the biggest. Um, I guess White, well, White and Dorsett would be the two biggest losers in this uh, when Brown starts to play. And uh, Kev, I'll let you uh, go on about Josh Gordon. Uh, um, since Antonio okay, Brown is, do that? you can you both can go have a chin wag about uh, about uh, Josh Gordon and uh, Antonio Brown drawing the coverage. I just, Jonathan, I hate you, Matt. Like, what the hell? Like, what is? How do you go from like the receiving core you had three weeks ago to Antonio Brown, Josh Gordon, Julian Edelman, a first round pick coming off IR, Demarius Thomas, who apparently is not washed anymore, Jacoby Myers, who apparently is the greatest undrafted rookie receiver of all time. And then you also have some dude named Gunner wearing Danny Amendola's jersey, just looking like a great returner. Like it's ridiculous. It's just I'm, I'm tired of this shit. Like uh, yeah, the Ravens, like like you said, three weeks ago we were looking like one of the worst receiving cores in the league, and now all of a sudden we have by far the best, and it's yeah, incredible. Three, three weeks ago we thought Jacoby Myers was going to be like the the number like one starter, receiver, and now he's like the wide receiver five. Like this doesn't make any sense. Nope, it's fun for me though. I hate it. And not only that, Dorsett is good. Oh yeah, I forgot about Dorsett. <laughs> and yeah. and Burkhead. Burkhead's good. Burkhead was effective. Every time he touched the ball, he was he's effective. He was, you know, picking up yardage here and there. They've got good Let's players. Talk- They've got depth everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, it's a good thing there's depth. Let's talk about how ineffective Sony looked. <laughs> Fourteen yards on fifteen carries. Ugly. Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, I all twenty really running guys. Not, that's true. That's a good way a, to lead right into our top Sunday performance because uh, uh, top Sunday performance. Let's start with the quarterbacks. Uh, number one, Kev, your guy, Lamar. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've been trying to tell people that he's not that bad of a passer. Yeah, I mean, it was impressive. It looked like the offense was really geared towards his strengths. He was dropping dimes left and right. Granted, there was absolutely no pressure in his face, but. Um, Marquise Brown went for 140 yards and two touchdowns on like 12 snaps. So um, I don't know. It's obviously like not going to be repeatable like over and over again. I mean, next week they got the Cardinals, so you might be in for another big Lamar Jackson game. But uh, clearly it just shows his upside. The whole offense is explosive. We're more downfield. The running attack really opens up um, downfield passing lanes. So um, I'm expecting big things from Lamar Jackson this year. I think I told you guys like early on I was. And, uh Taking a, a small victory lap because it was still the Dolphins. Jono, uh, Derek Henry, we were kind of down on him as being sort of a low to middle uh, RB2, but it turns out, uh, I don't know, it looks like he might have RB1 per, uh, potential uh, carrying on from where he ended up last year. I mean, he did what how how he always gets his big points, right? He, ra- he rattled off a few very, very big plays, but in between them, he didn't look all that good. So I mean, it's it's the Derrick Henry we expected. If he as soon as he gets gets momentum, it gets going. You're not going to tackle him. But if you hit him at the line, and then he's not going to do much else. It's I don't know. The I think that whole Browns game, you can just strike that off the record because they looked terrible outside that first drive. Yeah. Um, 
and Tennessee looked good. Not gonna lie. Uh, Mariota didn't get hurt, which was step one for him, and they look smooth. Yeah, so he was number three uh, RB this week. Uh, Kev, uh, I think the guy that everybody's talking about, the number four wide receiver, Marquise Brown, Hollywood. Yeah, I mean, kind of touched on him already. It's just he only played 12 snaps. So, uh, again, grain of salt with everything, but um, he's a great fit with Lamar Jackson's ability to throw down here. Um, I think he is probably going to be the number one option in that passing attack, kind of, like in a as far as value goes. Like if you combine his, his value of targets with um, the value, like the value of his targets with the amount you're going to get, uh, I think he's basically the number one option, or at least he's the probably the option you want the most shares of. Um, it'll be interesting. I think he's going to have a lot of good games, a lot of meh games. He's kind of Deshaun Jackson clone, so um, that's kind of what you're looking for from him. I think we'll be talking about him again uh, shortly too with. Uh... In uh, in waivers and uh, probably another guy too, uh, but I would like to talk to you, Jono, about uh, well this guy T.J. Hawkinson, uh, rookie number eighty-eight for uh, tight end for uh, Detroit. Looks like uh, he's the main target for uh, for uh, Matthew Stafford. Oh boy, Hawkinson looks like the real deal. He, I mean, he impressed in preseason, but he came out and did it and looked great. Like his blocking was amazing as well uh yards after the catch looked like a good target for stafford he he could like continue this i know everybody's got the thing against rookie tight ends but boy did he look good and like you said nine targets uh second to danny amendola of all people and man so, so why'd you why'd you drop him before week one jonathan i didn't think he was gonna get that many targets I didn't really think they were gonna get nine. He was gonna get nine targets in week one. I just remember when you drafted him, everyone was like, "Oh wow, Hawkinson! Really, really, you're gonna go with Hawkinson?" And yeah. Then two days before the season started, you dropped him. Who'd you drop for? Delaney Walker. Yeah. Yeah, uh, not too bad, but uh, just just hilarious how things work out. Yep, it's okay. I'm gonna spend. I'm gonna blow all my my uh my fab on him. That's fine. Yeah. All hundred dollars. Thinking we we get a thousand. Oh, Cause... then all thousand dollars. All thousand bucks. There you go. Drop it all week one on a tight end. Yeah, right. <laughs> you gotta save some money for Gardner Minshew, though. You gotta Ooh. save some. Gotta save some money for Marquise Brown too. And uh, there's a lot of other guys. There's a lot of guys to. Uh, there's a lot of guys to pick up. Uh, I'm sure you'll be discussing them. Uh, some of these guys are, might be even on these uh, on these lists. But uh, Kev, is there anybody on this list uh, of the of the Sunday Pop performers that that stick out for you that you'd like to that you'd like uh, to talk about for a minute? Yeah, I mean, obviously your studs, Christian McCaffrey is incredible. He's the goat. Um, or not really, but he's just amazing to watch. He's uh, the the Panthers ran like a uh, on one of his touchdowns. They ran like a direct snap to him, and he ran the read option with Cam Newton, which was like the coolest thing I've seen in a while. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. Uh, who else on this list had a great game? Uh, Dalvin Cook is someone that I've been touting all preseason. He looked fantastic. The Vikings look like they're going to maul people up front. Um, Number five Kirk, uh, this week, yes. Yeah, Kirk Cousins only had ten pass attempts, so. A lot of that's game flow, but I mean, when Dalvin Cook is rushing, I think he had 21 carries for like 114. Um, yeah, he looks good. He's paying off for people who picked him first round. What about you, John? Anybody in this list that uh, stick out? You know, like the- uh, I mean, I I myself was surprised that Marlon Mack did so well. Um, a lot of people were very, very down on him after Luck retired, but he continued what he was doing last season. He did well, even though the Colts weren't winning, which is a big, big thing for him going forward, but yeah, no, Mac was a uh, Mac was surprising. Yeah, number four fantasy uh, performance. Um, if there's anybody else, uh, for me personally, I always kind of thought John Ross would come out. Um, you said I think definitely people are gonna have to uh, definitely hit hit the ad button for for John Ross. Why don't we get into those waivers and drops, John? Oh, you're the writer for uh, waivers. Let's get into waivers, John. Who are we picking yeah, up this I mean- week? The Brown and Ross were the top two receiver waiver ads this week for obvious reasons. Um, I guess a big one now with with guys that would have been AP, which we, we already touched on. One of the main ones I had was Matt Stafford. Um, people kind of left him for dead after this year, saying the Lions weren't going to throw, but he threw 45 times yesterday. He had 385 yards and three, three touchdowns, and that's with Kenny Galladay only having 42 yards. The Lions receiving core is deep, and... They have a they have a good offense and it it worked really well. It, granted, it was the Cardinals, but it worked well and 
26% owned, but Stafford's better than Derek Carr and like whoever else is playing. Jeez, Cousins only threw 10, pa- 10 passes yesterday, and he's more well than Stafford. Nah, give me a give me Matt Stafford all day. Hmm. You got you got an RB to pass along for us? That, uh... Yeah, um, if you need a deeper league, I guess I, I I guess Ronald Jones. He he did look like the best Tampa Bay back yesterday. He had seventy five yards. It was the best he's looked in the NFL. And if anybody, if you need anybody in that backfield, it would have to be Jones at this point, unless you're in. <laughs> A full PPR league, and you want to go with Dare Agunbowale, but he only had the five the five targets. He didn't really do much with them. And we already talked about the wide receivers. What about tight ends? I got a good tight uh, end besides Hawkinson because we already talked about him. Yes, uh, besides Hawkinson, Vernon Davis. Um, he looked he looked good. Turned back the clock, hurdled the defender, looked fast, and as long as Jordan Reed is the quote unquote starter with his um, let's say checkered injury past. Davis is always going to be relevant so long as he's as long as he's starting. Mm. And now for the downside, Kev, uh, who are we dropping this week? Uh, so many people. Um, just it, it happens every year, right? Like week one, you go in and you hope such and such has some kind of role in this offense, and it turns out he has absolutely no role in the offense. Um, main guys, I'm dropping or looking at dropping if you're in a really shallow league. Um, surprisingly, so Darwin Thompson is for sure a drop. Surprisingly, Daryl Henderson, um, we could probably get away with dropping him. Like, uh, probably, like, Malcolm Brown looks like he's going to be the backup there. Uh, Geronimo Allison is someone that's, I mean, he just didn't look like he's going to have a share of the offense. Mm-hmm. Who else is there? I guess um, among t- uh, quarterbacks, like, a lot of guys proved that they're streamer only candidates. Trubisky was awful. Garoppolo did not deserve to win that game. Jameis, I'm still holding on to just because. Um, he is just that kind of unpredictable. I think last week, last year, he did the same exact thing. Came out, stunk it up. Game one, game two, threw for four touchdowns. So um, he's still someone that I'll hang on to because that offense is still scary. Uh, Mike Evans wasn't right that week, so eh, we'll kind of see on, on him. Right? Uh, am I missing anyone? Anyone yeah. you guys can think of? Um, I don't know. People, don't so. people that are are holding Kyle Rudolph can drop him. He had one target for nothing. Yeah, but I mean that's like. That's tough because Diggs and Thielen each had like two and three targets. It was just oh, yeah, true. it's hard to really say anything about Rudolph on that. Like I wasn't high on Rudolph to begin with, but if you were high on him, like you know, you can't really drop him just off that. That's true. But do we have to? I mean, I, I want to get back to Jerome Wallace, and don't you think people should just hang on one more week just to see? I mean, it was just week one, and um, let's let's face it, um, it showed that uh, Trubisky and Aaron Rodgers did not, you know, play any preseason. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, if you want to be safe with it, I mean, you can hold on to him another week. But uh, if you just look at his zero targets in a game where Rodgers threw the ball a decent amount, it's kind of sketchy. I mean, the same kind of logic goes for a guy like Anthony Miller. Um, right. He threw the ball a ton, and Anthony Miller got, I think, two targets. So um, it's just, if you look at target shares, yeah, theoretically, the coaching staff could turn around and say, hey, we need to get this guy out of Baltimore, but um, I just don't really see it. I think Marquez Valdez-Scantling proved he's better. Um, if Jimmy Graham is going to be somewhat rejuvenated, then Allison really kind of gets phased out of that offense. Mm, good point. Uh, yeah, the, uh, there was there was some I, – I feel bad because, you know, I, I did a reach for uh, Darwin Thompson, and now it's all that's all gone. So it has to be uh, – Put aside. Oh, drop Zay Jones. Zay Jones is yeah, Zay Jones. Yeah, there's yeah, there's there was a lot of uh, things things going on, but you can't drop Robbie Anderson. No, you can't drop Robbie Anderson. He had a strained calf. He was playing. He's getting shadowed by Tre'Davious White. He'll have better days. I want to talk to you uh, about uh, DK Metcalf uh, and AJ Brown. Uh, the two <laughs> the two freaks. Uh, did you see that picture of him, uh, Kev? Um, AJ Brown did pretty good. He got uh, uh, three receptions, a hundred yards. Pretty good. Uh, oh, pretty good out. Uh, yeah, AJ Brown is is pretty good. But I mean, the t- Titans have a lot of guys who are uh, all pretty average. So it's hard to really say who's going to do much week to week. Except that Mariota loves Delaney Walker, so that's one guy I trust. But I mean, they still a- got Corey Davis, even though he put up the fat donut. Um, he did a big fat donut. What do you make of him? Is he droppable? No. No, he's definitely not droppable. I think he's too talented to be droppable, but. Um, he, he's on the bubble. I, I just, I don't know. I, I think Corey Davis is like not worn out his welcome with the team, but to be 
their first round draft pick and then for them to bring in so many so much other receiving talent doesn't really uh it's not really a vote of confidence for him. Jono, would he be better on another team? Probably. Um like Kevin said, he's a talented player, it's just can't seem to whatever the reason, get it together with Mariota, can't stick in what is it, his third or fourth different offensive scheme right now. Just unless something drastically changes and he somehow figures it out with Mariota, he's not going to live up to the the draft, his real life draft position and his fantasy draft position for the last two years. Let's. Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, John O. I'll start with you. The Kyler Murray. What do you think of his first yeah. uh, outing? I mean, the the numbers look pretty at the end of the day, but that was ugly for the first part of that game. Um, he put it together in the fourth. He did throw a couple of nice dimes to Larry Fitzgerald, and the offense did start to move co- to close to the end of the game. But boy, that was rough for his owners in the first half. I tell you, uh, he's on my bench in one, in one of the in one of my leagues. It was at, for, at well, at one point it was him and Cam. So I was just crying in my corner. But yeah, um, I think as as the games go on, he'll get more consistent. He'll figure it out, and he'll he he will end up being a pretty good quarterback for fantasy purposes. And uh, of course, I was I wanted to go into a little bit more about because uh, um, I I talked about AJ Brown and but DK Metcalf, uh, Kev and Tyler Lockett. Um, Tyler Lockett didn't see a target until late in the game. He scored a touchdown too, but it looks like DK Metcalf is the man. Yeah, that was strange. Um, not really sure what to make of that. I'd like to see another week. I feel like that was just a strange game. thought the Seahawks should have taken care of business, but I feel like often they have these kind of weird games where they play down to the level of their competition. Um, Lockett, I mean, of course, was ultra efficient with his targets, still got a 44-yard touchdown. Going forward, I, I'm still expecting Lockett to be the guy there, but Metcalf's usage is a little interesting to me. Um, something to monitor. Like. All right. Um, further on, looking at uh, looking at some other players here down on in for the uh, – I guess I'll look at some talk about some running backs here as soon as I get them up here. Uh, yes, um, John O. This is kind of important. Todd Gurley and his usage. Uh, some question marks still about this. Yeah, things weren't looking good for Gurley uh, through the first three quarters. Uh, it almost looked like Malcolm Brown was the was the main back for a while. Uh, he scored the touchdown. He was getting a lot of lot of important carries, and then Gurley ended up going off for sixty four yards, I believe, in the fourth quarter. Um, it kind of calmed his owners' fears, but yeah, that those first three quarters, it almost looked like they were splitting it, and they're they were severely limiting Gurley's carries, even if they did say he was going to play a full a full complement. And Kevin, who's who's going to win ultimately? Win, I guess. I guess Ronald Jones is the is the man now. Uh, as Jono says, he's a, he's 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 a, He's a good spec waiver pickup based on his performance. Have we, are we a little closer to knowing uh, what that backfield is going to be all about? Um, a little bit closer. I mean, it, it's it's a weird game that, you know, Jameis threw three interceptions, probably should have thrown like five or six. But um, I think Ronald Jones by far looked like the most impressive runner out there. Also was useful as a pass catcher. So theoretically, he should be the guy going forward. But um, you never know with NFL coaches. I would probably pick up. Ronald Jones, if I could, but uh, it's still a little hard to say. I mean, the one thing we know for sure is that, like, Dare Ogumbawale probably is not going to be much of a factor. Right. Uh, John O, what about the Philadelphia backfield? Darren Sproles got a lot of work, more than I expected. Sproles is almost like the passing back version of Gore, where you just know if he's on a team, he's going to take a bunch of work and ruin everybody else's fun. But, <laughs> like, I think this was coming through the entire offseason – that the Eagles was gonna the Eagles backfield was gonna be a committee and people didn't want to believe it. People always want to go with the the rookie running back, say he's gonna take over. And I mean Miles Sanders did get eleven carries. He led the backfield, but he didn't do anything with those carries. Mm-hmm. He I mean he two point three yards a carry. Uh Sproles averaged five point two. Jordan Howard averaged seven yards a carry somehow. And yeah, Sanders didn't look really good. And this is still gonna be a committee regardless. So it's like I say, it's a year of the vet, and yeah. every time I, you know, I, you want to bury Sproles, Gore, McCoy. Well, maybe not McCoy so much, but those other two, they've been around, you know, for such a long time. And uh, Kev, your your man, Jordan Howard, uh, he's kind of like in the shadows. I mean, it's just uh, Doug Peterson is just going to do this. Like, I don't know why anyone thought it was going to be different. He's going to rotate running backs, however he's he's fit based on situation and whoever's got the hot hand. 
So, I mean, Miles Sanders could have had a bigger day. He had, like, uh, I think he had a touchdown called back on a penalty, and then he had two carries from, like, the two-yard line and couldn't punch either of them in. So he could have had a bigger day. So I would still be pretty high on Sanders out of those guys. But uh, it's going to be frustrating all season because that's just how Doug Peterson goes. John O, people got uh, got what they paid for with Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, I mean, Le'Veon is still Le'Veon. Regardless of team, he's going to get a ton of work. Uh, and the passing work always boosts his value. I know the Jets obviously don't have the offense that the Steelers do, but Le'Veon's still Le'Veon. And volume has always been always been the key in fantasy and he will continue to get that until he either gets hurt or holds out again so right. uh kev the devin singletary is he gonna is he going to emerge uh he did end up uh with uh what did he get he got uh, 70 uh, 70 rushing yards and 28 uh, receiving yards yeah and i was listening to a podcast office i didn't watch this game i have better things to do with my life but i was listening to a podcast and they mentioned that devin singletary actually didn't get a touch until like the end of the third quarter so he put up these 98 yards within a quarter and then some so um i think it's i mean if the bills are trying to win games he should probably see an uptick of target or of uh, touches going forward so singletary is someone that i'm pretty excited about um, based on the highlights, he looked pretty good. And Gore had, like, what, 10 carries for 20 yards. So um, it's only a matter of time. Yeah. And I guess we can go back a little bit to the uh, uh, what we saw on the Thursday night game. With I guess it's not um, – the the Packers and the and the Bears, they're both their offices uh, uh, as far as the running game went. It looked like a very shaky game. Like it seemed like – to me, it really looked like a preseason game. That these teams weren't really playing at their, you know, at their full at their full potential. Because um, I didn't I didn't see a lot from Aaron Jones or or Jamal Williams. Although Aaron Jones got more of the carries, but uh, David Montgomery, mm, yeah, it looked pretty ordinary. Kev. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say he looked ordinary. He looked pretty good as a runner, but as far as his workload, that was less than ideal. Um, Tariq Cohen was on the field a ton. Uh, although he was like mostly playing slot receiver, so that was kind of weird. But Mike Davis was actually getting used a lot. Um, I think you're going to slowly see Montgomery get eased into it. But um, this was kind of the worry when people drafted him high was that they weren't going to immediately hand the reins. And uh looks like that's what's going to happen. Jono, what do we make of Raheem Mostert? He's a backup running back for the 49ers. I mean, I know that Coleman's out uh, two to six weeks now, officially with a high ankle sprain. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mostert's the backup, but Breda's still the guy. Mostert will probably be pretty annoying if they want to keep Breda healthy, but he's still just a backup. If if you have Breda, I can see handcuffing, but standalone value, I'm not going to pick up Raheem Mostert. Mm. And I guess we got to uh, scrape the bottom uh, eventually. Uh, Kenyon Drake have uh, 12 yards rushing, 15 yards through the air. Um <laughs> We saw one of our guys in our league drop Kalen Balazs, and boy, what a good move! And to pick up uh, Rob Gronkowski, who isn't even <laughs> isn't even playing, it just shows you how uh, bad. I, oh, I, he 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 will be. Don't you worry, he will be. <laughs> but first, first of all, let's talk about Kenyon Drake. Kev uh, is uh, and Balazs. I guess you can put put them in the package. Uh, eh, what do you think? Are we? Uh, uh, I mean, it's it's such a so hard to judge any Dolphins players given that their front office doesn't want to win games. Um, on top of that, the Ravens were literally just, they were blowing up everything that the Dolphins wanted to do. So you can't really blame Balage. I mean, five yards, one, negative one yard, or five carries, negative one yard. Um, that to me doesn't really seem, I mean, I watched the game. It wasn't really like his fault. Like they were just blowing him up at the point of contact every single play, him and Drake. Um, there's a chance that they might do something next week, but the Patriots defense is actually pretty solid. So I don't know. It's, it's just like, they're going to be bad. They're going to be in a bad offense, but, uh, if Fitzpatrick can kind of get things going a little bit, I still think Drake has some kind of pass catching value, but Lodge, I'm, uh, I wasn't really in on anyway. No, I think that, <laughs> and, uh, I, I, I think there might be better days ahead because, uh, the players are, uh, Players on the Miami Dolphins are getting a little bit antsy. As we, uh, if anybody's been reading the uh, the Twitter feeds and in the news, the like Miami players are grumbling that they someone want to be traded. I don't know whether they've gone on actually gone on record as saying that, but uh, I don't know whether it's rumor. Is anybody has anybody gone on record, Kev? That that you no, know of? 
no one's actually requested to trade, but um, yeah, it's an ugly situation. Really bad, really bad. That's not the way. That's not the way you tank. You don't purposely, you know. You see how the Browns because you see it all. I don't like this idea of they should have a lottery system or something to prevent tanking. That's what they do in the NBA because that's what teams were doing before they brought in. That's why they brought in the lottery so teams wouldn't purposely tank. You know, so that there wouldn't be because it's bad for the league if uh, you know getting getting draft picks based on your. I know they want parity and everything, but teams are using this to uh, to get their own way. I don't know, John. O, when it comes to the Patriots, they do it at all. They do it a whole different way. But um, uh, what do you, what do you think about this situation? I mean, tanking. it's rare to see a team tank so I guess so blatantly in the NFL just for them to completely give up. And feel, you know, the team closest to ever answering the question, what what NFL team can Alabama beat? But yeah, it's bad, and it's a bad look for the league. But until, like you said, they do something about the lottery rules, there's nothing against this specifically. But it it looks bad all around either way. Yeah, I think if it I think if it gets gets out of hand, they're going to. Well, it looks like it's getting out of hand. What with the uh, the Miami uh, the Miami Dolphins, but. Uh, it's okay. The, the the Dolphins have the Pats in Miami next week, and I'm sure <laughs> it's gonna be the it's gonna be the yearly Dolphins beat the Pats at home game. I'm sure there's gonna be some dumb miracle at the end of the game where I don't know, Albert Wilson runs a 95 yard end around to to win the game. Like I don't know, it's gonna be something stupid. It's true. It's very unusual when uh, if you look at the records of Miami and uh, and the Pats when when the Pats visit Miami. Uh, the, the Dolphins do upset them. But I don't know about this year. Um, Antonio Brown's getting it. Well, I mean, this is, you know, I, I don't know how many Miami Dolphins fans are going to show up at this game. <laughs> really? I mean, it's, it's, yeesh. would you want to go? If you were a Dolphins fan, would you really want to go and see your team get slaughtered? I'd I go know. for the cheap tickets. I'd boycott. You'd boycott. Would you go? <laughs> I mean, come on. They're not trying to be productive. They're not trying to, like, I get what they're doing. Like, it's a tanking. It's a tank job. At the same time, like it's it's just too blatant of a tank job. It's just like disgusting. And this is not a sport like basketball where you know people are putting their lives on the line. Basically, like mm-hmm. linebackers there are going out like legitimately could suffer career-ending injuries and stuff like that. Like I wouldn't want to play, and if I was a fan, I wouldn't want to watch it. Yeah, you want to put out a good team, and yeah, because exactly, Kev, you hit the nail right on the head there because. It is it is one of the roughest sports in the world. Let's face it; like people people have broken bones on a weekly basis, you know, and and not only just career ending, but you know, um, life threatening injuries. You know, when some of these guys are getting their fifties, you know, and they're 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 hard. They have troubles walking and things like that. You know, they end up. You know, some players, you know, they. They're on their feet and everything. You know, we always see them getting interviewed. But you see a lot of guys, a lot of the old guys, you know, they're, you know, coming out there and they're, uh, you know, a bit bent over and they're not in as good shape when they, when you know, when they, when they start getting up in years after they've left the game. Those, all those batterings they've taken as a youth just uh, catch up with them in the, in their latter days. So um, it's, it's, it's one of those things. But uh, yeah, again, uh, I don't know. <laughs> But uh, what what are they uh, now? Sixteen point favorites, the uh, Patriots. Is that all? Sixteen point five. I know. I thought that was kind of low to me. I mean, well, I you know, would you? Uh, I don't know. I th- you could take Miami in the points, and you might win because, like you say, they're the, the Patriots go down there, and they don't do as well as you'd expect. If but. you take Miami in the points, like you, you, you just have a gambling problem. Like, <laughs> what would the payout be on that bet, anyways? Like, you better be making like a uh, bunch no, just, of money if you're no, making just, that bet. No, just not. Just the take, money line you might get like the money line is probably like plus I don't know eight hundred plus twelve hundred something crazy. Well, if you it's not enough for it to actually happen. Yeah, definitely. Well, that Miami could beat the spread. No, they could beat the spread. Yeah, but uh, that's what I'm saying. If you're banking on that, if you're putting your hard earned money on on that, and then beating the spread, uh, I, uh, yeah, team like no, no. no not gonna happen yeah well yeah 16 check what the percentage bets are on the patriots right now it's got to be like nine. are you checking that out now let's see if i can find it you guys go ahead and talk for a second all right yeah um but it is uh you know it is a fantastic i can't i can't imagine how the patriots have all these good players i think they showed a graphic 
I read some somewhere that uh, that there are four there are four players in history that have had sixteen yard sixteen hundred yard seasons, and they yep. are and three uh, and there's four players in history, and three of them are 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 mean currently uh, players that are active, and uh, the Patriots have three of them. Yep, fun times. I forget who the fourth is. Julio, no. That's right, Julio. All right, so the line I've got right here is Patriots by seven. Oh, 18 and a half. 18 and, and a half. That's more like 70% it. 70% is on it. Uh, or 70% of the public is on that. If you wanted to bet Miami to win, it would be plus 1140. <laughs> so wow. Bet dollars win $1,100. Well, bet a buck. You would win 114 bucks. You'd win 14 bucks. Yeah. 140. Yeah. Not bad for a dollar bet, though. Anyway, I'd, this is I'd put a buck on it. Why not? I wouldn't. Ah, it just wouldn't happen. You'd be throwing away. You'd be throwing away a buck. You know, but yeah, you can't even get it. Who is that guy? Who is that guy that put a quarter on his? Uh, put put twenty five cents on a on a DFS, and it turned out to be awesome in our uh, in our Slack league in our Slack chat. I don't know. Somebody put a quarter on it. It looked like a pretty good lineup he put in. That was John Lepresto. He put it in a twenty-five cent um, league, though, so he won like nothing. Oh, tough break. Shout out to John. Uh, any other issues, league issues that we need? Oh, there's one guy I want to talk about, or one guy I want to really would like to talk about, and that is, uh, you know, uh, the the game between the Chargers and the uh, and the Indianapolis Colts uh, yesterday on on Sunday. Uh, well, the the Chargers were out, were without their kicker. And they had to use their punter to do dual duties. Now, this punter in the Canadian Football League is very common for punters and kickers to do both duties. And this guy was from the BC Lions, Ty Long, and he got all the extra points, and he got all the, and he got, I think he kicked one field goal, and he did because Michael Badgley was out, and he did the whole job from from the from the BC British Columbia Lions. He was uh, quite he's quite happy being from. Uh, I've seen a lot of BC Lions games in my time being from Vancouver. So I was quite happy that uh, that a CFL guy, you know, uh, comes in to do it. And you know something, if Patsy doesn't come back, um, they don't have to really get another kicker because, uh, you know, it kind of saves um, a roster spot by having um, a guy with the, you know, you know, that's a hybrid kicker and punter at the same time. I don't know why they don't do that. Get, get hybrids, you know. Actually, CFL kickers... Are, are actually probably a lot better than people think. They're, um, CFL kickers are pretty good. So if they get a kicker from, from the CFL, they, they do well. Any thoughts on uh, Ty Long, uh, Jono? You're you're from, you know, CFL game. Kickers are pretty good from CFL. The, I mean, aren't the goalposts, like, far wider? Yeah, yeah. And at the front of the end zone? Yeah. Oh, yeah I, don't, I, don't, I don't really follow the CFL, but we're talking about kickers, man. Come on. I know we're talking about kickers, but the kickers are people too. And we're talking about we're talking about a punter. Never mind a kicker. We're talking about a punter. Come on. I know we're talking about a. P- <laughs> I know we're. T- yes, it's true. We're talking about a punter, but he out kicked Vinatieri. Vinatieri was just awful. Eh. Ah, crickets. I get crickets whenever you talk about kickers, but we got to talk about kickers because people kick people have kickers in fantasy, so we got to talk about kickers sometimes. It's kind of important. That's their problem. They shouldn't. Some people like to play traditional leagues with the kicker. Kickers, you know, I, you know, we get really, really. This is. I knew this was going to happen once we got rid of kickers. Is that is that we look down our noses at people who have kickers? It's just not. It's not I mean, right. I got rid of kickers. That happened before we got rid of kickers. Well, well, not not. No, that's not true. That's not true. We always started. Like I remember going back. It, there was never this talk about kickers until just until later. Like after 2012 or 2014, that's when I noticed that people started wanting to get rid of kickers. I remember 2012. I don't remember anybody talking about kicker was just a normal thing. You know, everybody had a kicker, and you just got to pick a kicker. And you st- and it was it was true. People, I think it was the thing is that people started streaming. Now people want to get rid of defenses. So what do you think about that? There's no defenses in the Scott Fishbowl. We don't want to look down at people who uh, you know yeah, I mean, like defenses. Just- you don't want to have people streaming. Everyone wants to stream. And that's, I think that's the thing, though, isn't it? Whenever you're streaming, that means you're not playing. You're playing, but it is a game after all. So, streaming. They should make restrictions on it. 
do you think it should be just uh, pure defenses? Jono, any thoughts on defenses and kickers? Punters, that is. I mean, I grew up playing with both. I don't, in, in or out, it doesn't really matter. The game is still the same. It's just another position you have to you have to draft for. It. It's the same research that goes into it either way. Just matchups at the end of the day. Yeah, it is. I mean, they make us they make us rank them. So that's such a mature take on this. <laughs> like just just who, draft, who man. Who are you? Well, you guys you guys pick a topic then to to finish off the show because we're almost at the end here. Josh Gordon's t- touchdown catch and run was great. Yes, it was such a good touchdown. Classic flash. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, he was good, but uh, I I kind of feel bad for Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh looked, uh, you know what? I don't know about you guys, but Kev, do you think that they kind of miss Antonio Brown? The, the offense looks totally different without him. Do they miss an all-pro wide receiver? Yeah, I think they <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean. Well, let, let's talk about the uh, the poor center that got left by himself oh, man. on, the, on that snap. I think I've done that one time in like practice. It's embarrassing, man. It, you feel so alone in the world. <laughs> it's like 11 to 10 people are just like dude what are you doing that's uh, so bad poor guy but that was a great highlight <laughs> it was just bad because they were down like 30 to 3 and then everyone was just laughing at him like that's that hurt me to see i kind of missed that you're gonna have to give me the details so i'm gonna have to look at because i i didn't watch the entire game i when it was 33 to 3 i i don't know maybe i overlooked it but it was just google um penalty on everybody but the center once we're done here <laughs> okay. That that's that that's what the ref called. Yeah. Penalty on everybody but the center. Oh, but uh, okay. But I do want to talk about the Pittsburgh offense, though. Uh, without Antonio okay. Brown, um, it wasn't a good day for the Steelers. They they looked very bad. No, well, I mean, they just couldn't get it, anything going. I mean, I actually, to be honest, I kind of thought Jalen Samuels would have a little bit more. I think it, I thought he would be a little bit more involved in their offense. Not not Switzer. I feel like Jalen Samuels was involved in the offense. Not much. Not as much as a guy like Switzer. Switzer's, you know. I don't know. I think they're just weird game. Like, I don't know how much you can really. Like, are the Steelers going to score three points a week every game? Like, I really doubt it. So, let's That's, see what happens next week. To me, to me, Moncrief is trash. I mean, he can't catch a ball. James Washington is the guy. I always thought James Washington was. I couldn't believe it that the, that the Steelers would make uh, Moncrief the number two wide. I, that's going to change. I know it's going to change. I don't know what your thoughts are. Well, you heard it first. Um, I think it'll change later in the season. Like if I own Moncrief, which I think I do in one league, I'm hoping he has like three good games, and I trade him, and then that Washington starts taking the role. I, I I admit too, I was high on Moncrief. I was thinking, well, I guess the Steelers know better than me than uh, because I mean I see all this action with James Washington. Like, wow, this guy looks like the number two. You know. And then it's Moncrief, and I thought, well, maybe they, you know, maybe Moncrief, they do know, they know their stuff better than me, but, uh, I don't know, it doesn't seem to look that way. How's it, John? Uh, like, like Kevin said earlier, you can't really judge the Pittsburgh offense on whatever happened last night. They're not going to score three points a game for the rest of the season. I'd give it another couple games before really, really judging what the offense is about. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for our uh, week one. We're still working out the bugs for this because uh, we're not used to doing it on Tuesday because we always used to do our uh, podcast on Thursday after the Thursday night game. And then we'd have a weekend preview of, of things. It's kind of weird doing a, a review and uh, then looking ahead uh, like we used to do. So, but uh, I don't know. It's still kind of fun. We'll work it out, work out the bugs and have a proper system for you all who follow the fantasy edge but uh want to thank uh Jono and uh, kevin for joining us on the fantasy heads i'm richard seville be sure to check out the uh, fantasy six pack hour with joe bond and aj applegarth they will have the preview this week and you'll be able to uh follow their starts and sits and so forth when that comes along but uh we hope it was an enlightening program but uh join us next week for the fantasy edge take care everybody and good luck in week two <laughs>